Look down from an airplane upon the New Jersey town of West Milford. Look around from one of the wilderness trails that crisscross the 80 square miles of township. Far away and up close, the impression is of a lush, expansive landscape of forest and lakes. It is an environment populated by bear, deer, coyotes, hawks, and rattlesnakes, as well as some 26,000 people, all located about an hour's drive to Midtown Manhattan. This is a quiet community with minimal industry. The residents, mostly commuters, are usually heading east to work every morning. They come back home in the evening to the sounds of nature. It is almost impossible to believe that this place was once a hub of the Industrial Revolution. This area was more primitive in 1766 when a man with a dream decided to build an industrial iron empire. The term for it then was industrial plantation. He was the visionary Peter Hessenclever, a brilliant German iron master who as a teenager learned his craft from his father. Peter was an organizer, innovator, and colonizer who established the first large-scale iron operation in the New World. In addition to Hasenclaver's considerable technical talents, he was a very persuasive and enterprising salesman. He was driven by an obsession with iron, and at the age of 47, he founded the American Iron Company. It was incorporated in England in the year 1763. That year he convinced Queen Charlotte, the wife of King George III, and several other influential people to invest in his dream, sight unseen, even to himself. In Germany he signed on a company of more than 500 skilled iron workers and other craftsmen and persuaded them to sail with their families to New York. From there, they journeyed to the wilderness of northern New Jersey to construct a set of ironworks, one of which was at Long Pond, now known as Greenwood Lake. The Long Pond Ironworks is located in the present-day West Milford village of Hewitt. The imported workers from Europe moved fast. They built the forges, furnaces, mills, stables, houses, and also the infrastructure of roads, bridges, reservoirs, and supporting farms. They dammed Long Pond and diverted the Wanakee River to run water wheels that operated the air blast for a furnace and large forge. Aside from the fantastic construction effort, mines had to be dug. At least 53 were opened. Trees had to be cut down for lumber and to make charcoal. Goods and supplies had to be carted in. Iron had to be crushed roasted and transported along with charcoal to the furnace and forge. This was an enormous undertaking of intense activity. This beehive of activity continually fed the furnace and forge. To make the product, the work of iron making had to be carried on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. When the crude pig iron came out of the furnace, it had to be refined. This required heating and hammering to remove impurities. In this process, huge water wheel driven trip hammers operated constantly in order to make usable iron. The amount of racket arising from the many forges must have carried for miles over the tree stripped landscape. This noise, together with the wood smoke produced in making charcoal, must have made this industrial plantation world indescribable during the many years of operation. The Iron Master, Peter Hasenclever, at this time in America was considered a giant among men. He was internationally praised for his awesome achievements in the colony of New Jersey. He was honored professionally for his insight, new techniques, and However, at the very moment of his triumph, his investors panicked. They expected a quick return on their investment and were frightened when they saw his plans as too grandiose and expensive. They replaced him in 1769 by Johann Jacob Feisch, 
the man Hassenclever hired his supervisor years earlier. This new overseer was skillful, competent, and communicated well with his workers. But then Feisch left the American Iron Company in 1772 to start his own ironworks at Mount Hope, New Jersey. The next master of the ironworks was the Scottish scientist and inventor Robert Erskine. When the Revolutionary War started, he sided with the Americans against his home country. During the war, he kept the ironworks in operation to aid the cause despite threats from the British and their colonial allies. To counter the threat, Erskine created a militia. He also helped the war effort at Long Pond by creating iron links for a huge chain that spanned the Hudson River to block the invading British ships. Each link weighed 114 pounds. This 600-yard chain was completed in only six weeks. Erskine died in 1780 at the age of 45 while on an army map-making expedition. After his death, the business became dormant. He is buried at Ringwood Manor near the former ironworks. On March 30, 1782, George and Martha Washington planted an elm tree at their friend's grave. Martin Ryerson, a local businessman, acquired the property in 1807, primarily to supply his Pompton Ironworks operation with iron ore. Eventually, his sons revitalized a blast furnace, forge, and other structures at Long Pond. In 1853, Peter Cooper and Abraham Hewitt bought the ironworks and operated as part of their Trenton-based iron empire. Long Pond Ironworks was renovated and modernized. Production of iron continued for the next 30 years. During the Civil War, high-quality iron was produced to make cannon for the Union Army. But despite the technical and transportation improvements, and after 126 years of existence, the last blast of the furnace occurred in 1882. Iron ore was still being mined, but the charcoal was gone, the trees were gone, and the industry had gone west. Coal would fuel the furnaces in Pennsylvania, and the mines of the Great Lakes provided vast amounts of iron ore. The era of Long Pond ended, and over time, all that remained were ruins. Many years later, after nature claimed most of it, the historical importance was recognized. In 1957, the Ringwood Company donated 173 acres of Long Pond property to the state of New Jersey. By 1987, it became Long Pond Historical District, listed in the New Jersey and National Registry of Historical Places. It was also designated as a National Historic Landmark and dedicated as a state park to officially preserve it for future generations. The industrial plantation has been reborn, this time in the custodial hands of the Friends of Long Pond Ironworks. This not-for-profit organization has taken on the considerable task of preserving, restoring, and interpreting the past. In this historical district, there is a museum, visitor center, and education program. Tours are conducted and living history events are featured. A journey here is an unforgettable experience. From iron, a jewel has been created in the highlands of West Milford.